Hi everyone, um, my name is uh, Daniel. I've been working recently with uh, large folios, Adopt Tuning, CMM, and Tempefs. It's a bit low. Is a bit low? Okay, uh, sorry. So, um, yeah, I've been working with uh, the adoption of large folios. Uh, recently, I submitted the patches, uh, but there's also different uh, implementations of how to adopt large folios in, in HMM and TempFS. So I hope we can have a discussion on where, you know, where to go and, uh, and whether it makes sense to do and apply file systems logic to HMM or not. So my uh, latest implementation of the, of the uh, large folios adoption, it's basically allocating a large folio based on the right, uh, on, the, um, uh, on the file size and uh, that is uh, using the mapping order that, uh, that uh, you have in the, the mapping requirements that uh, you might have in the, in the page class, as uh, Luis was, was mentioning before. Uh, so in that sense, you have order, uh, like order of uh, high, point, uh, high order folios that are aligned to that requirements, and then you can go all the way up to uh, PMD size. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the allocation logic uh, for for the order calculation. Um, so in the, in that sense, we are just satisfying the right size that we are allocating, uh, what, that we need to allocate for. Uh, so very very conservative uh, and very simple uh, logic for for this. But this is exactly uh, what in file systems. Uh, you know, we are doing with large folios, and, and the first ones to adopt this logic was uh, it's, it's being XFS. Um, so that is the approach that, I, that we took, and uh, I added support for the write and fallocate paths. Uh, so for example, in the write path, you will take the, the size, and in the fallocate path, you will inherit a, a, again the, the path, and then there is a loop that it will go in uh, like index by index, so I would just go as far as I can in that loop and, and make the, the size as bigger as, as it can. Um, because of this um, large folio uh, allocation, now we lose track of the up-to-date flag for every single individual page that you have in the, um, uh, in the large folio. And that makes um, the LSIC uh, fail uh, because you cannot anymore seek data and seek holes in the granularity that you need. So you need, a, you need somewhat a mechanism uh, to, to identify every single block uh, that you have allocated. Of course, we are talking about blocks here in, in, in CMM. This is uh, already part of the code, uh, but it's, it's just a term that makes uses, that, that CMM is using for the lowest granularity when, 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 when you are allocating a, a folio. In this case, uh, the, the size is, uh, is just the page size, the, the, the base page size. So I approached, uh, one of the initial approach of, uh, of this was to add it for huge pages. But uh, Hugh uh, mentioned that that was not correct because the test needed to be changed uh, to actually make sure that uh, uh, that you can have a granularity of a base, uh, base page size or, or a huge page size. But now we have an arbitrary order. Uh, so maybe the approach, the, ori the original approach was wrong, uh, but now since we are adding an arbitrary order, uh, I still think it's needed because you, know, you don't know exactly which order are you gonna allocate your folio. Uh, you are gonna honor the size of the, of, uh, of the write. Uh, but you might end up in a situation with orders, uh, uh, you know, all the way all the way up to order nine. So in that sense, uh, by having the lowest common denominator here, uh, you can have uh, seeking uh, uh, all in, in the entire folio. This, uh, in order to do this uh, block uh, tracking, I, I was based on the work from uh, uh, that we have in IOMAP that pretests. Uh, actually made a talk the, on, on Monday, I think. Um, so it's heavily based on, on that, and 
that, for example, uh, tracking mechanism allows me to, for example, do a punch hole whenever you are fallocating. You fallocate a, a order five, for example, and then you might punch a hole, and because you have the ability to track every single uh, up-to-date flag, uh, then you you, ca you can clear those uh, those bits and then you know uh, make them available for uh, for 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 the for the punch hole uh, uh, operation. There is also a possibility to clear the sub pages uh, whenever you have the up to date flag. Uh, so now we, we can clear these sub pages within the, the large folio. Uh, those are operations that are, are part of the CMM code, but uh, they are because because now that you you have a you either clear the page when you are talking about huge pages, uh, you clear the entire huge page. Uh, or just clear uh, the individual the individual pages, uh, uh, the individual order zero folios. So now we, we are adding this ability, you know, and uh, that that is added uh, as I mentioned only for the write and fallocate paths. I've been also working on the read paths that I will mention it later, uh, but uh, but yeah, essentially uh, that's that's the approach that um, that we. That we that, that we've been um, going with, uh, but recently Baolin uh, submitted a few patches. Uh, I believe this is something that uh, the memory guys uh, agree on uh, to adopt the multi-size uh, THP. And basically, here the difference is that you allow the system to allocate, if I understand the code correctly, uh, to allow uh, large folios allocation. Uh, from uh, from a CFS, so you control which kind of allocations uh, are you gonna, which kind of order of allocations are you gonna make, and this is like this strategy for me. Uh, I don't understand why you want to control. Uh, from what I understood uh, was that uh, this is a solution uh, to a. For, for the system administration, I, I guess, uh, to control whether or not you want a multi, uh, a, 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 like a large folio or not. But the problem, if uh, we, we are talking about here, like a challenge, you know, whenever you are evicting memory, uh, we still have the, the same situation, whether or not you, uh, so if you enable, let's say, let's say you, you enable all the large folios, possible, uh, all the multi-size uh, folios, then you end up in the situation where you just allocate a large folio, and then memory uh, here can be a challenging uh, point. However, the um, the there is this um, situation where the memory cannot be evicted whenever we are talking about shemem because we don't have a backing device. But that, that I found that uh, that's only applicable for, um, for TempFS and not swap and not ShemM because we cannot control from ShemM if uh, we have swap or not. We always have swap. That's only for a mount option. So in that sense, uh, is, is that correct? Uh, I think you're aware that there are systems that run without swap. Then you don't have swap. Yeah, okay. And uh, like, for example, under some, uh, if I remember correctly for RHEL, uh, there are certain instances where we don't support swap. For example, I think CNV and all that OpenShift stuff for now. Uh, but we require at least four gigabytes of swap as a safety buffer that are never to be used. So in these environments, you can be sure that if you swap out, something is going seriously wrong. So there will be no swap out of shared memory. There will be no reclaim. Um, and I think that's, that's the biggest challenge here, as I would say, because shared memory sometimes behaves like anonymous memory. Sometimes it behaves just like, just like a page cache, like you write back your stuff to the file and you're good. Um, but you really can run into scenarios where you don't have swap, you cannot swap, there will never be reclaim. And the reason why we added MTHP, this, this fine 
controlled way to anonymous memory was exactly to control, on the one hand, memory overhead, meaning memory waste, um, and that is a real thing, and on the other hand, because anonymous memory is only mapped into page tables, so usually you really only benefit from it, for example, if you, uh, if you reduce your page faults, because, I mean, if you allocate a large page, you get less page faults, and if you're able to use these con PTE optimizations and things like that. So we really balance between memory waste and actual performance benefit. And again, the issue with shared memory in TempFS is that it's it's used for two purposes, right? Some people just write to a shared memory file and it's like a page cache and maybe the file will get deleted like one minute afterwards and you don't care if you allocated over allocated memory um, but then we also have these use cases where you essentially always map shared memory into uh, into your uh, address space and you never do read or write and the, the prime example is for example when you use um, tempfs to back uh, virtual machines like if you share memory between virtual machines you never do read or write you always work with page faults and I, th I think w what you described with the write and f allocate path, um, as long as we're not wasting memory, I think it's mostly good. There's like one concern I, I had about like that we might strand like large pieces of valuable memory in, in shared memory, but that's a different discussion. But as soon we go towards um, allocating more memory during a page fault, for example, what that, that approach from Baolin does when you, like anonymous shared memory, you only get page faults, that's where you allocate memory. And that's where we behave almost exactly like anonymous memory. So I think like for, for what Baolin is working on, it makes perfect sense to have at least like the same control as we use for anonymous memory because that's really what it is. Um, as soon as we wo go towards like on the right path and F allocate, I think it's, as long as we're not wasting memory, it's not bad. I think it's, it can be quite valuable because it speeds up certain operations and I assume you, you measured all of these. Um, the question is, for example, what happens if you allocate two megabyte of memory and that THP will be stranded in that file forever, although nobody will actually go ahead and read that. If, I think if we can solve that problem, that will already make life much easier. I think for the smaller THP sizes, if you have like a memory compaction in place, then memory compaction might already like rearrange blocks and it might split up your stuff and you might be good. Um, but that's like the, the prime con primary concern I have is like, what if we make stupid decisions and we waste our like valuable transparent huge pages on a shared memory file that is not really going to benefit from it and we don't know the lifetime, we don't know if we can reclaim. And um, so yeah, that, that's just like set, setting the stage for while I think it, it makes a lot of sense what you're doing and then there are these corner cases and I, I have no idea what to do. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, and if on regards of the, uh, so you mentioned uh, wasting memory and uh, that is, um, Actually, whenever you are allocating huge pages and then you enable the huge equal always, no? You are you are allocating huge pages all the time. And for example, there is a tempfs uh, like a tempfs test uh, in XFS test that basically uh, unpacks uh, 26 megabytes of data into a one gigabyte of uh, uh, shared memory. And uh, what happens is that eventually you reach very quickly to uh, the, 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 sp the maximum space that you have, you, you, are, you are allowing to that mount uh, space. And, uh, and, and what happens is that the CMM already splits the huge pages that you haven't used. Uh, well, actually, it splits the pages regardless of the up-to-date status. And, uh, and then all of a sudden you have uh, that memory available to continue allocating uh, the, the memory in individual pages. Right, but, but I think that case is different. I think that happens because if you, uh, if, uh, assuming you have like a THP in your shared memory somewhere and do, you do a F allocate punch hole on, on half of it, I think what shared memory code ends up doing it is it tries to split the folio, it tries, yeah. but it cannot split the folio if there is like an unexpected page reference to it. So I think that's really just like a deferred fix up of, well, there is actually free memory. But if you wouldn't have that F allocate punch hole, nobody would try to split that because there is no money to be, uh, no memory to be reclaimed. I mean, it's like two megabytes of memory that are getting used. So uh, 
I, I, I think that's what's happening. I, I, didn't, I didn't look into the details, just my, my suspicion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, actually, uh, TMPFS support a uh, huge page option called Vision Size. So, with, with, uh, the Vision Size enabled, actually, if a huge page is uh, beyond the boundary of your file size, when memory pressure happened, the kernel will split the THP and free the other pages beyond your file size and keep all the pages under the file size in memory. So memory visiting should be not a big issue if we use a vision size. It's a huge page, a TMPFS huge page mount option called a vision, vision size. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, it's a option. It's a called a vision size. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, you don't have to use swap to free the memory. It's actually there's a dedicated shrinker to shrink the huge page, which is uh, beyond the the I know size. Yeah, split, and yeah, free the the actual not, page. Yeah. Uh, if the page is pinned, you cannot free, but uh, right. if not pinned, you can. You, and you don't have to use swap. But, okay, I don't know if there was a question. Uh, okay, so maybe we can find a solution in between. I don't know if um, more folks have um, uh, like uh, strong opinions on this, but the strategy, as I mentioned, uh, still, yeah, uh, the, we we talked about the, why, why we want to, to have control of the of the pages. But as I said, if we could have somewhat uh, some way to allocate it like uh, automatically without you specifically saying uh, that would be transparent in a way as the file systems are doing, I think that would be a much better approach other than. Uh, having specific control on, on the allocations. Um, I don't know, it still feels a bit odd uh, comparing to uh, file system size, uh, the file system side uh, allocation. Um, yeah, well, uh, having have a, a clear answer on that, so maybe uh, we can have more discussion uh, later on uh, on the main list, but I'm very happy to you know, work with you guys and uh, maybe talk with Baolin about which is the right approach and maybe test it and, and maybe drop this or maybe find a better way. Uh, I mean, I think like the most important use case for the MTHP interface today is because you mmap that memory all of the time and during a page fault you don't know what to do if you're allowed to over allocate memory or not. So maybe there should be a way, maybe if, if you have the same thing, you have a shared memory map file and you have a page fault that you would want to apply a similar strategy that you don't end up over allocating memory. But if you know exactly like during a, a write path or during F allocate path, somebody really wants that memory there, then like you don't end up over allocating memory and that's already a big win. And uh, on the other hand, if we can find a way to, to to not have like these large chunks of memory stranded, although they're better used. And maybe that already exists. Again, I didn't read the code in detail. That would already solve solve two problems. I think like the the, the main issue is if you have M map shared memory and you get write faults and you also want to use huge pages there or like large folios, however you wanna call them these days. Yeah, I'd I'm not sure about the, I mean, you, you don't end up in a, I think you, you don't waste the memory while you are just honoring the size. It's, it would be just the same as allocating in individual pages, but... Uh, if, that's, just, if that's the case for shared memory, if we do track that, that would be great. I, I, I didn't review Bowling's patch set in detail. What happens, like, if you have a page fault and there was no memory allocated yet around it, if you would simply say, yeah, well, like, I'm, I'm giving it more memory and I'm also marking these blocks that, as allocated. Or if it's just, like, these other blocks are free and you can reclaim the memory later. If we can reclaim the memory later, I think we're pretty good. Then we can just allocate more and free it up later. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's not taking care of, or he's not um, 
uh, using the size of the right. So he's just getting the, uh, but I, I'm not sure, I'm saying this by memory, like he's um, allocating based on what MTHP is available and then allocating as much as it can. But in this case, we would only allocate a large folio when, when it makes sense to the size that you are trying to allocate uh, for. In the end, you would end up with the same size allocating but individual pages, and, uh, but in this case, in a continuous way. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, I've been also adding, uh, that is not part of the patches that I've sent, uh, but I added also support for the read uh, eater, uh, the read eater uh, path. They all seem to work. It's just another loop that it goes all the way to, it's very similar to the, to the fallocate. Uh, so in this case, we, we are allocating the memory that we are gonna read uh, anyways, uh, but in larger chunks. But uh, I believe, um, Wilcox, uh, Matthew, you mentioned that uh, we could be also an option to add read ahead uh, here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I guess we could maybe add this read ahead uh, uh, callback in the um, other space, but I'm not sure if this is something, uh, I guess it's to get better performance, no? And then read more, but, uh, and, and then get the same performance that PageCast is, is doing. But in this case, we don't have a backing device, so unless we have a swap, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how this fits into this scenario. Um, yeah, we've been talking about the swap and uh, actually uh, Geoffrey uh, mentioned in one of my, one of the first submissions uh, that why we are just uh, not allowing uh, the, uh, the, the large folio allocation uh, when, when we have swap. And uh, because Reclaim will split the large space, uh, the large folio anyway. As I mentioned uh, before, that's the, that's the case I was uh, trying to explain. Um, and here at least uh, I tried to do it and with these latest patches that I've submitted, fixing all the uh, up-to-date cases whenever you are doing the tracking, they all seem to work and uh, that will be a second iteration if we are interested in adding this because whenever we allocate a large folio, we are gonna split uh, that anyway. That is the same case for, for the um, page cast no? and, and the XFS. Uh. <clears throat> um, recently, it was submitted, uh, I think uh, a release ago or something like that, um, the ability to or to allocate uh, shared memory from XFS. Uh, I think it's, uh, so it's these two files, uh, X file and uh, XFS uh, buff mem, that these functions alloc try to allocate the memory. Uh, I think according to the description of the patch is, I'm not sure, I'm not sure why it's mentioning large folios because we don't have large folios yet upstream. But I guess there is more people trying to get the benefit of the large folio allocation from other file systems. Uh, so the question here is, can we get benefit of, uh, of it by adding large folios, whether or not we include uh, multi-size, uh, so control of uh, manual control, manual toggling of, of, the, of the sizes? Uh, can we get benefit here and get some maybe performance benefits as well? Um, it's an open question as well. Then we have the splice read. Uh, there is, so the question here is, can we optimize the path? Uh, what the splice read does is getting a bunch of, uh, so it, it gets a folio from the page cache and, and then it tries to, uh, to splice. Uh, and for that it gets uh, a range of folios, uh, sorry, a range of um, a range of memory within the same folio, and then it it sends it to the splice folio into pipe within the file map, and then that loop uh, would just split the folio in sub pages and uh, will send them uh, in individual pages to the to the confirm path. 
but uh, we recently added support for is partially up to date, which already takes care of ranges. So, would it be would it make sense to actually send the entire range that we have submitted to the splice path uh, directly to the confirm path? So, is partially up to date would take the entire range. Uh, in that sense, we don't have to loop. Uh, for every single individual page, we would just send the entire range. Uh, I think this is, I don't know, it hasn't been, uh, has been forever that path, so uh, I don't know if uh, there is any other case with large folios that uh, is making use of is partially up to date, uh, but uh, I think we can get benefit of that. Uh, Okay, so that's the implementation part that I had uh, that I wanted to share and discuss. Um, in order to guarantee that we are not breaking things, uh, we are relying on uh, KDevOps. We had already a session uh, about it uh, yesterday, and I want to have the opportunity to kind of let you guys know about the project and uh, and how we are using it, we we have added support for tempfs. Uh, so temp, uh, what KDevops does is uh, is an automated uh, uh, it's a, it's an automated suite of uh, virtual machines that you can deploy in any any in any um, uh, cloud provider or locally, and then it would just spin up the machines uh, for you with all the um, this that you have in, that you want to to be in a, a part of the machines and and then run those tests and then get the the results back and uh, we are currently running all these profiles for tempfs we have also support for block tests and xfs and and so on but for for the for the case of tempfs so i added all the sup, all the um, we added all the um, profiles that we thought it was uh, they were they were they were um, they had some meaning. Uh, so we have, for example, swap and no swap options. Uh, so it would uh, you would end up in a individual machine, like in a like in virtual machines that would run XFS tests uh, for every single uh, test case that we, we we have here. So in that sense, every single patch uh, we, we would make sure that we are not regressing in 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 the in the test. And I could see that in between 6.8 and 6.9, uh, we actually have fixed, um, or it has been fixed, uh, one of the tests that uh, it was failing. But uh, we are planning to, yeah, we already have uh, been in contact with the zero day guys and we are looking forward to integrate this in a more automated way. So they are already experimenting and evaluating the proposal. But it would be nice to have uh, if you know if any of you guys are already running uh, any of these tests to provide some feedback. Uh, so, or is this just every as uh, as I hear from the other uh, talks that everyone is running its own test suite, and then they you guys run it uh, manually and and uh, whenever you have the time. But at least that's uh, we are planning to do that, and hopefully that would, I guess, make make sense. It's 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 a it's a rather small file system, so we that's why we we started with uh, with that. Um, performance. Uh, I don't know if performance are being run at the moment. Uh, this, uh, if you guys can provide any benchmark. Uh, sweet uh, benchmarks, uh, I don't know, tools that you are actually running. Maybe you are just building the kernel using tempfs, uh, or or in your driver you are just running a, a specific test for that. Uh, I, I would be interested in that. For now, what we've been doing is uh, running FIO and uh, comparing, uh, you know, with XFS LBS uh, work that we, um, uh, we've been submitting, you know, uh, Luis and, and Pankas have been submitting recently. And we notice here uh, an, 
an like a, an improvement in, in performance in between releases. This uh, the, the the one in the left uh, is the 6.9 kernel, and the one on the right for tempfs is the 6.6, .6, I believe. But we can see that XFS is outperforming tempfs anyway, and uh, we were expecting with the adoptions of large folios to outperform uh, and get much better benefits. But uh, the the latest performance test that I've run on the patches that I sent yesterday, it shows actually a decrease uh, on, on that. And I'm not entirely sure why we would decrease whenever we are allocating in, in larger chunks. It's totally, uh, of course, we are not talking about getting coalescing uh, uh, improvement. It's just allocating in larger chunks. Uh, so this is a. Uh, x66 machine uh, with uh, five, uh, it's a uh, five gigabyte, uh, where well, I can see here, five gigabyte of uh, file of, of tempfs uh, memory. So yeah, that's, uh, that's something I wanted to share and maybe I'll have to dig into why we are getting this decrease in, in the, in, in when we are allocating in larger chunks. Uh, so as far as like performance testing stuff, uh, ButterFS has this thing called fsperf that we use, which is just like you can drop in FIO commands, or I have FIO and dbench currently, and but you can do other stuff. Um, and there's like a whole suite of things, and these get run every day on ButterFS. So you can either like you can import this into fsperf, and you can run fsperf and get all of our existing set of performance stuff. But it's pretty nice because it'll spit out all the FIO stuff, and you can track it over time. OK, yeah, cool. Is that part of the ButterFS test? Uh, no, so this, if you just Google fsperf, it's on my GitHub. OK. So, uh, but th this is what we use for ButterFS, and we have like a dashboard that has all like the historical stuff. And uh, if you have trouble with it, let me know. But like it, it'll generate graphs for you and all this stuff, so. OK, thanks. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll dig into it. Um, so ju just curious, like how, like could it be that when you allocate large folios that you trigger memory compaction or something like that? Like if you, for example, always have like large writes, let's let's say you have like a two megabyte write and you want to allocate a large folio, that you trigger memory compaction and that just like removes most of the benefit here. Because uh, I remember that there were similar discussions with MTHP and anonymous memory, like at which orders would we actually want to trigger reclaim or where it might it be just better if you just like use a smaller size and like tolerate one more page fold and things like that. So that's just something that, that I could think of. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh... Yeah, as I said, uh, I would have to dig into it. So thanks for the for the input. I can probably answer that because uh, compaction w wouldn't be triggered in this case, uh, just because the system has gobs of memory. We're talking about one terabyte memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no. Okay. <laughs> Hello. I couldn't help but notice the slide involving XFS. Um, the, the, sorry, so it turns out we, I can't remember who it was who nerd sniped me into doing this, but somebody pointed out that you can force tempfs to use THP pages. Yeah, you can with the huge equal mm -hmm. uh, always, yeah. So there was a whole bunch of kind of last minute refactoring of xfile.c and xfsbuffmem.c to actually make it so that we can grab any folio that tempfs feeds us of any size and actually have it all work properly, but it does actually do that. For the current use cases of XFS X files, we're mostly using it to stage intermediate records for rebuilding metadata B trees and things like that. So they're temporary. They don't tend to live all that long, and we don't really care what kind of folio we get. It just needed to work correctly with all the modern folio APIs. So that's why that there, why that's there. But that's not particularly performance critical unless we try to do something else with X files someday in the future, which maybe we will and maybe we won't. Unclear at this point. Okay. Great. Right, thanks. Yeah, and uh, finally, just future work. We we are thinking of maybe if yeah maybe if we can have an agreement uh, with uh, memory fault with uh, Baolin and whether or not we want one thing or the other or, or a merge in between them. 
Uh, we, Matthew, you mentioned uh, now that maybe we just have to drop Swap uh, in favor of Scash. Uh, we really want Latfolios in the swap path, uh, but uh, yeah, that will be a next step once we have Latfolios in the read, fallocate, and write paths. Uh, so it would be a, a way to, we would have to have a way to stress the swap path, but uh, I don't know, again, if any one of you is running any performance tests under a system, uh, under a memory pressure system, would it be uh, very welcome to repeat that test and maybe when the swap path uh, you know, has support for the large folios? Yeah, there is a lot of uh, work in there, but um, whether or not that it will be soon. Um, but uh, it will be something that also we'll be interested in, in looking at. Also, Matthew, you mentioned uh, just, a, just a quick note that uh, I should Basically, there is this get order uh, instead of the, that can be used for allocating the the memory. Uh, so to 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 find the right order uh, for the size that you are uh, you want to allocate, and I tried that, but uh, I ran into several issues, uh, and then I didn't uh, spend more time on it. But I'm planning to review that part. It's just that in some of the FS tests uh, that I was running. I could see some of the tests were regressing. Uh, if I switch to get order, I can see the difference in between the order that I get back from get order, from uh, comparing with the mapping uh, and uh, and the order I get from the function that I uh, that I have added. Uh, but yeah, I still is something that I would have to dig into. Um, and also, finally, the, the order uh, tracing. We have something in, in PageCast, I, and I, I'm planning to borrow that uh, to basically be able to run a BPF tool or something that allows us to have a bet, better picture of how the allocations for that particular workload are, 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 are looking. Um, and that would be it. So I know if. You guys have any questions or suggestions? Uh, I'm very much, as I said, to work with you and find a solution uh, to move this forward. Uh, maybe in the next session, in the next. So just a quick comment. So I took a look at what does the huge page shrinker in shared memory do, and it does not do what you would expect. The only case it handles is if you have a two megabyte THP that crosses the page size, uh, the fi file size, meaning if you F truncate it, then you can clearly identify that part of the page can be freed because it exceeds it. Yeah. But what you cannot identify is if you over allocated memory, at least upstream, because I mean there's just like a file in the page cache. Maybe with, with some, something you described where you like track each individual block, maybe yeah. that would allow to detect if we over allocated memory. If so, that would be great. But if you have tracking of the up to date, then you would be able to split the folios whether or not they have data on it, then if you don't have a swap in that system, but you haven't written into that uh, because you have allocated and written only in the first or last uh, block, then there's potential on releasing, on reclaiming that the memory that you haven't written into it, uh, if you have that ability of, uh, of Right, you, you have to track which, which page was actually written to, which was actually allocated in your block device, exactly. Yeah, that, that's uh, the, the tracking mechanism that I was based on retest work, and uh, I, I guess that would that, work. That would solve some of the issues, yeah. yeah. Thanks. I guess an open question here, too, is uh, how do we minimize or, or share uh, the most amount of code for uh, addressing large folios for swap, given that we're also now at a boundary where we're starting to evaluate this for tempfs, uh, FS cache, file systems with large folios in mind. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question, so I figured it'd be great to put it out there, get people to think about it. I'm not sure, dude, does anyone have any thoughts on that? I think we're 17 minutes over the end of the schedule, and it's really time we got out there and had some snacks. 
Thank you.